I'm gonna teach you how to catch a debt collector and win. The first biggest mistake that people make when they start working on their credit is they start to dispute these collections. I'm gonna teach you what not to do and how you can catch a whole ass debt collector in a violation so you can sue them and win. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike the Credit Guy, the biggest. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you find out every time we drop new content, you're gonna hear about it first. Now, if you haven't already, you need to hit that little like button. That way this video gets out to way more people. Okay, in case you didn't know, we talk about everything credit on this channel. I am the owner and founder of Limitless Culture. We created the most advanced DIY program in the industry at $55.99 a month. Our system will create custom Metro to attack letters, attacking all the negative items on your credit report and the personal information that's not accurate. Okay, our system is gonna create your custom letters email them to you, you print them out, certify mail, and you're done. It's just that simple. You don't have to join any archaic Facebook groups, do any master courses, or read any modules. We call all that nonsense out. You don't have to do any of that. Link is always going to be in the description for all of our services and for the most advanced DIY program in the industry. So you open up your credit report and there it is. You've got a collection on your credit report now. How do I get it off? People always ask the, the magic question, what letter do I use, Mike? You know, how do I get it off my credit report, Mike? And I'm like, oh my God, put some work into this, ladies and gentlemen. But understand that there's a lot of people that make this huge error because you want to start just disputing. One, never dispute inside of Credit Karma because you are waiving your rights to any potential future class action lawsuits or any type of litigation. Some of you have already done that, so you've already lost, okay? <laughs> All right, so now, also, do not dispute inside of the actual portals that the credit bureaus created. Only dispute your personal information there, and that is it, okay? Sometimes I don't even wanna do that. I'd rather pick up the phone and do it over the phone or send them a letter because you are agreeing to their terms and conditions. Remember that. And it's very limited as to the reasons of, as to why and how you can dispute it. So you don't wanna be limited in how you can dispute something, okay? Now. The biggest mistake that credit repair organizations make out there is they start to attack the item with basic standard disputing letters. Now, if you're using Metro 2, this does not apply to you unless you stop the process and you go this route, okay? Now, if you have a collection, the first thing you want to do is figure out who the debt collector is. Get their name and their address. You can get it on the bottom of your credit report. So everything starts at the top of the credit report, go all the way to the very bottom. That's where you'll find the name, the address and the phone number of the actual debt collector. If it's not present, then that should automatically be deleted because it needs to be on your credit report. I'm gonna say it again, stop disputing collections with the credit bureaus until you do this first, okay? This is very important that you understand that because this step can potentially win you some money. Yeah, I said that, win you some free money if you follow it exactly to a T how I tell you to do it. First step, you're gonna find the debt collector's name, their address, and their phone number. That is the first important part that you need to do. If this does not exist on your credit report, that immediately is a violation. Their name needs to be above the account, all of their information, and then at the very bottom of your credit report is where you're going to find their address and their phone number. Do not call them and do this over the phone. You need to send it certified mail with return receipt so you First step is you're going to take all the information that you just found about the debt collector and you're gonna fill out this cease and desist letter, okay? And put it up on the screen right here so you guys can see it. You're gonna put all their information, the debt collector's name, the debt collector's address, and if you want, the phone number also. You're also gonna put your personal information, only your name and your address, and that is it. Do not, I repeat, do not sign this letter, okay? And you're going to fill it out and you're going to fill out the certified return receipt information. It's a little green form that you're going to get at the USPS office, okay, or the USPS location. Okay, you're gonna fill that all out and on your envelope. You need to send this certified mail with return receipt. So you have proof that they actually signed it and then they're gonna send you that little green, that little green tab. They're gonna mail it right back to you so you have proof. 
Any time that you send a cease and desist letter, you need to make a copy. Make a copy of the certification showing that you sent it. Make a copy of the little return receipt. Save this all in an envelope and put it in a safe and save it for the rest of your life. Because if this debt is resold to a debt collector, okay, so like the debt collector takes it, they get the, they get the cease and desist, then they sell it to another debt collector. Guess what? The cease and desist is still valid. If that other debt collector communicates with you, guess what? That is an immediate violation and you can sue that debt collector. And now guess what? You still have the proof and you can use that in a court of law against that new debt collector because that's what normally happens if a debt is sold to a, from one debt collector, debt collector to another debt collector, then guess what? They don't know that the cease and desist even, even exists because the original debt collector doesn't communicate that. They're not really good at communicating anything, okay? So remember that. It still holds water and it still holds in place the cease and desist. If the new debt collector that bought that debt communicates to you, that is an immediate FDCPA violation. You can sue them and win just for that situation. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That way you find out every time we drop new content, you're gonna hear about it first. And also, drop some comments in the comment section of any specific things you want me to talk about, any questions you have about these credit cards. Don't be afraid to drop any data points. Also, if you have these credit cards, something I didn't cover. So everybody can help each other build a community here, okay? And hit that bell notification. That way you find out every time I go live, you're gonna hear about it first. Okay. Now, if you're looking to work on your credit, we are a full service credit management company. We created the most advanced DIY program in the industry, $55.99 a month. Our system will create custom Metro 2 attack letters attacking negative, inaccurate, incomplete items on your credit reports, including personal information. We'll email them to you. Our system will email them to you. You print them, you mail them out, certified mail, and you're done. It's just that simple. You don't have to learn any crazy modules, learn any master classes or join any antiquated Facebook groups. As a matter of fact, we're gonna give you exclusive access into my new app that anybody that joins the DIY program is going to get for free, okay? It's included in the program once you join the DIY program. Links are in the description. We also offer a full service Metro 2 attack program, a full service pre-litigation program that is designed to get you a free legal review and an identity theft program also for people with identity theft issues. Link is always going to be in the description. And as always, last part's the most important. I wanna make something very, very clear to you. If you send this cease and desist letter, you can potentially be sued. Now, I'm not gonna say sending this letter is gonna trigger a lawsuit, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need to understand if you still owe the debt, the only two ways that, they can, that a debt collector can communicate to you is to let you know they received the letter and they're not gonna communicate with you any further, or they're going to sue you. Those are the only two reasons that a debt collector can communicate with you. People think that you cannot be sued by a debt collector. No, in fact, you can, because the original agreement or whatever type of loan ap application or agreement you sign clearly states the debt can be resold. This right here can potentially help you to stop the debt collector, and if they communicate with you, you can sue them and win for free. Any lawyer will take this case for free if you sent this certified mail with return receipt and you have proof that they received the cease and assist and then they communicated with you. Any form of communication, okay? Remember, the only ways that they can communicate is to tell you that you re they received the letter and they're not going to contact you anymore or they're going to sue you. Any other form of communications is a violation of the FDCPA. Okay, now when I say you, you can be sued by a debt collector, I'm warning you because a lot of these people won't tell you that when you send a cease and assist or you start communicating back and forth with a debt collector. It's not the letter that's gonna trigger a lawsuit. It's the fact that they're, gonna, they're going to have one last chance to try to collect on this debt and they can sue you. Now, can they win in court? There's a lot of other things I cannot cover on this video, but I'm just giving you the, the knowledge that I have and the experience that I have from sending these cease and desist letters. But remember, we want to catch them in that violation so you can sue them and win and eradicate the debt. Now remember, 
You're not going to dispute this with the credit bureaus first. First, you're going to send this letter to the debt collector, okay? Certain debt collectors have systems in place that are gonna make them trigger with certain responses. I cannot say which ones because we don't wanna give that type of information out, okay? But understand that they have systems in place to trigger certain letters to mail out to you, okay? So send it certified mail with return receipt and then you're going to wait 35 days. Because it takes about five, day, five business days. Sometimes it takes longer by the USPS, okay? It depends on where you're at. But 35 days and then you're going to get the little return receipt in the mail with their signature saying they received it. Remember that, okay? Once you receive that, now you can start to dispute with the actual credit bureaus. In your dispute letter to the credit bureaus, okay, you're just going to list the account name, the account number, the amount that's owed, and you're going to say something very simple. This account and the way it's reporting on my credit report, the last date of payment, the, la the first day of delinquency, the balance, the account number. I do not recognize this item as it is reporting on my credit report. Please delete it immediately. Now, you're gonna send that certified mail to the actual credit bureaus and you're gonna wait for a response. Now, what happens is eOscar creates your dispute and it, and it communicates a Metro 2 code to the debt collector or creditor. Now the debt collector or creditor has 15 to 30 days to respond back with their Metro 2 code. Sometimes what happens is the debt collector will respond to you and let you know, hey, we received your dispute that you were disputing this item. Please let us know how you are disputing and what you're disputing about it. Or you can send us a letter in writing. Bam, you got them in your sights. You caught them in an exact violation of the FDCPA. We work with attorneys that take these cases. You can send us an email at contact at limitlessculturegroup.com. Again, contact at limitlessculturegroup.com. Send us all your information and we'll reach out to you if you have a case and you follow this to AT. Because when they communicate with you that they received the dispute from the credit bureaus, they were not supposed to respond to you. They're only allowed to talk back and forth to the credit bureaus, not with you, okay? Because remember, we said cease and assist all collection activities. It's very simple process. This isn't rocket science, ladies and gentlemen, but understand, if you can catch them in a violation, you can sue them, and the legal team will go after them to sue them for the violations and get rid of the debt and potentially win you some money. The legal teams take their fees out of whoever they're going to sue, the legal teams that we work with, okay? So you would pay zero out of pocket when we catch a debt collector in a violation. This is the process. We send the information to a legal team. They tell us if they can take the case because at the end of the day, legal teams want to take cases only that they can win because if they don't win, they don't win any money. It's that simple. If they win money, then you win some money. How much? I don't know. Each violation can be up to $1,000 per violation. Okay. But Remember, they're taking their legal fees out of those violations, but your job is to potentially absolve yourself of this debt, extinguish it, finito, it's done, okay? And then once it's done with the legal team, then guess what? Now you have a document that says this, this debt is completely finito, it's done, it's finished, it's finalized, the debt does not exist. And you wanna get that type of letter from your legal team or your attorney stating that the debt has been absolved or it doesn't exist anymore, or the debt is settled, or the debt is resolved. Whatever it may be, you want it in writing, and you save that letter for the rest of your life. The process of catching a debt collector is really just that simple. But you gotta follow through, and you gotta follow those steps to a T, because you need proof of all these things that happen so you can present it to a legal team and they can go after them. I hope you learned something here. This is very valuable information that I don't give away to everyone, but I'm giving it to you first here on YouTube because I love my subscribers and I can't do it without you. And also, make sure to watch these next two videos because they are recommended by YouTube. And do not forget, subscribe to increase your credit score.